Torrential rains poured down on Trinidad and Tobago for a third day on Monday, triggering more flooding as waterlogged residents were advised by authorities to brace for more. Faris al Rawi, Trinidad's Minister of Rural Development and Local Government, announced that the trough causing the adverse weather conditions was, at the time of his midday press conference, standing stationary approximately 10,000 feet above the Twin Island Republic. We have more weather occupying the positions right above us. Um, they're stationary right now, so that means we're going to get more rainfall. And with more rainfall, we are in the reminder that we are in the riverine and um, national alerts. We're at orange level, and those levels stay there. Orange level means high danger. It means risk of serious flooding. It means risk of serious events. Um, the Positions are moved down to yellow when we begin to look better, but may move to red depending upon the severity and as we may be advised. And he also provided information about the extent of the floods and other hazards across the country. We've had 83 significant flooding events. Of course, that's not to say that we don't have flash flooding or receding flooding in small areas, but 83 significant events, 41 of which are in direct control and the rest of them are being managed as we speak. Remember that whilst flooding is going on, whilst water is raging, sometimes you just have to mitigate or make it as best as good as you can um, while it is going on until the repairs can be done after. Landslips in total, and these are significant landslips, not that there aren't other landslips. We've had 137, 52 of them are in full repair. Fallen trees, 31, including those that were reported in this morning. These are significant road blocking events. Um, 28 of them have been dealt with already, which means we have just a few that are ongoing as we speak. The figures recited by Al Rawi may not necessarily convey the true extent and gravity of the damage, however. Reports from local press outlet The Guardian are that nearly every large river in Trinidad has overflowed its banks. Footage obtained by the Trinidad and Tobago Weather Center shows the mouth of the Marianne River in the north of the island as it empties into the Caribbean Sea, reportedly sweeping along several fishing boats in its rushing waters. Low-lying communities including Caparo, Maracas, St. Joseph, St. Augustine and Caroni, among others, have been hardest hit, with people in these areas being forced to higher ground. Approximately 30 people were evacuated and placed into shelters in safer locations. Meanwhile, landslides blocked several major roadways, and in one case, the, village, the villages of Matalot and Grand Riviere were cut off from the rest of the country on Sunday as a landslide on the Paria main road severed access to those communities and trapped two vehicles in the process. Works and Transport Minister Senator Rohan Sinanan appealed to Trinidadians to refrain from unnecessary travel, especially in areas vulnerable to flooding and land slippage. If you don't have to be on the road in these areas, you know, it is it's much safer not to go on the road. We have had a lot of culvert failures and landslips on the road network itself. So we, we are mobilizing today to start the repairs, especially in the areas where there's no additional access road to ensure that connectivity remains. There are challenges on the, the normal roads like the North Coast Road, the Paria Main Road, the Blantyshares uh, roads. However, all these roads except, I think, are the... the Las Cuevas area, there is a, um, a culvert failure there where we have closed the road. We have reopened the, the Lady Young Road last night. However, um, we will be uh, closing that road tonight again to continue with the cleaning of the, the landslip. If you're proceeding along the Lady Young Road, we ask that you proceed with caution because the, 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 the slips are real, they are, 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 they are active. We have equipment up there, but, you know, at any point in time, we can expect landslips. Once that happens, we will have to close the road again to make sure that the road is safe. Valsin South in eastern Trinidad was the scene of multiple evacuations as the area flooded for reportedly the fifth time in just two months. Dozens of homes were rendered inhabitable, abandoned after the St. Joseph River and its tributaries overflowed their banks, leaving the houses sitting in floodwaters for over 12 hours on Sunday. Residents in the area found it difficult to deal with their current circumstances, with one telling the Guardian that it was a heartbreaking cycle. They pointed out that not even emergency services could access the area due to flooding. Meanwhile, the deluge of rain has compounded the issues being faced by Zaid Mohammed. 
The resident of Walker Trace in Freeport told visiting journalists from The Guardian that his home has been under more than four feet of water for the past three months because of a blocked drain on the northbound lane of the Solomon Hochoy Highway. The frequent rainfall over the past months means that the standing water in the area has had little chance to recede. His issue, Mohammed said, has been shuttled between the Ministry of Works and the Highway Division, and now, with water damage across the island, authorities are overwhelmed. Quote, they tell me is about 500 jobs in Central alone, Mohammed told reporters. It's a long wait. He is currently bunking with a neighbor while he awaits assistance. Another resident in the same area, whose home was fortunately raised above flood level, has a different issue. Two Caymans have reportedly taken up residence in the area, making it unsafe for the homeowner to venture outside. Meanwhile, authorities have been staging rescue operations across the country. One woman, however, has reportedly defied officials from the local fire department and her family, choosing to remain on property that is being assailed by floodwaters. Garnet Mahler, the woman's brother, spoke to CNC3 about the situation. We believe she's safe there. And what you believe you're safe, you're really safe. But we tried it with her. I tried it at 8 o'clock this morning. Thanks to all these people here. We made a very valiant effort, and she still doesn't want to come out of there. So her mind is set to stay there. You're fearful for her? You're fearful for her? I, I will not sleep comfortable until that water goes down and her house is safe. What was the condition of the house when you went down? The condition of the house, the upstairs and downstairs house is falling. And she's going to stay in a flat house on the side. Which if the big house comes down, it will come on top of the small house. And she just does not want to leave. And look, all these goodly people here went to help her. And she will not come out of there. Schools across Trinidad and Tobago remained closed on Monday. An advisory issued by the Ministry of Education on Sunday suggested that they may reopen on Tuesday, aside for those facilities which require cleanup operations before they are fit to accommodate students once again.